G'day guys, I'm Captain Demeter. Welcome to the review of Fall of Light. Before we get stuck into it, why not hit a like button? Don't forget to subscribe because I release brand new content every single day. Okay, Fall of Light is a small indie game created by a company called Runeheads. It is a story-driven action RPG set in a world that is consumed by darkness. The game opens up with a very simple cutscene that shows you how the world became what it was and explains that you are an old warrior by the name of Nyx and that you are on one last epic quest to take your daughter, Aether, on a final journey to see the sun one last time. You see, your daughter is a radiant, luminescent being. She is an indigo child. You must battle your way through the minions of darkness, exploring the world and escaping through the myriad of traps and danger to escort her to the sunshine one last time. And all that seems like such a great idea and premise for the game. The game itself looks fantastic. It has a really unique and interesting graphic style. It is fairly simple, yes, but the game itself is actually fairly attractive. I actually really like the look of this game. And that's what attracted me to actually play the game in the first place. But there are two major flaws with this game. The first is your daughter. You see, while you have to escort your daughter through the world, and I do mean escort, because at many, many times you have to be holding her hand as you escort her through the game, it makes it very, very difficult. The AI of her character can be really annoying. She constantly gets stuck on things. She wanders off. And although you have the ability to command her to stay still in one place sometimes, she just decides that she doesn't want to. Now, it would be perfectly fine if she wandered off by herself. You can always go and find her. But if she is killed by the myriad of monsters that are around, you then have to go and find her and resurrect her from her ashes. The second major problem of this game, and it is a fairly major problem, is the combat itself. The combat is very, very similar to a Dark Souls style game. The enemies are deadly. A couple of hits from the enemies and you are put down. That is not a problem. There are checkpoints for you to restart and do the battle again. The biggest problem is that there is a recognizable lag between the controls. You have a simple light and heavy attack, a shield block and a rolling dodge. But quite often, while pushing the buttons to activate these, nothing seems to happen. And in a game where the enemies can literally put you down with a single hit, this is a big problem. And as if the problems of the lag weren't a problem enough, because you also have a stamina bar, you occasionally find yourself spamming the roll button, trying to activate it so that you can escape, only to use up all of your stamina and find yourself standing there, being unable to move, leaving you completely open again to the attack from the enemies. And so you die. Now, as if the enemies weren't bad enough to combat against, there are also a myriad of traps and dangers that you must fight your way through. Simple things like small little traps that spike you and do some damage, all the way up to some very, very deadly ones that must be defeated with a trial and error type process. The character himself has the ability to customize everything from simple things like changing the look of his character to being able to equip different types of weapons. There are weapons that can be found throughout the world that can be equipped. A lot of problem is these weapons had no real description as to whether or not they were any better or worse than previous weapons. And it only really came down to the type of game style you liked, whether it was the slower, more defensive style of a sword and shield or the quick attacks of using daggers. The game levels themselves are fairly different to a certain extent, although there was a number of times in which you had to backtrack through entire levels of the game, which I found to be sort of poor design of the game. In one instance, my daughter was captured and I had to return all the way back to what was almost the beginning of the game to actually go and rescue her. And of course that meant then having to fight my way through all of the enemies once again. The game itself is fairly short. Being able to complete the game in approximately six to eight hours, 
there are multiple endings to this game. The game also comes with two modes. The first being a normal difficulty and the second being a nightmare difficulty. I personally only tried it on the normal difficulty and still had a lot of troubles in that and was not brave enough to actually give the nightmare edition a go. So the big question is, would I recommend this game to you? Well, unfortunately, my answer would probably have to be no. As much as I enjoyed playing this game and I like the look of the world of the game, the constant lag in controls became an issue. And I can see people becoming very frustrated with this game very, very quickly. I was fortunate enough to purchase this game when it was on sale, and I am glad that I did, because I still wanted to actually give the game a go. I really liked the look of this game, and I was very, very curious. And I'm glad that I did actually get a chance to play it. Anyway, guys, that was my review of Fall of Light. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below. Have you guys tried this game? What did you think of it? Are you planning on actually trying the game? And if there are any other games that you would like me to do a review for. And until next time, thank you very much, and don't forget to respawn.